What's up guys, Damon here, 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Yes, list day, and today we're doing another one of my remake lists. Uh, this is one that I did a kind of a, a shorter version, it was like a top 5 before. And it is my top 10 top deck cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Every once in a while you will find yourself in a scenario where you just need the next card in your deck during your draw phase to be the card that saves you in the duel. Your opponent will be all like, Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this Yugi. And you hit him with that classic, My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. And I figured, you know, since the last list came out like two, three-ish years ago, now would be a great time to refresh this one and actually extend it out to top 10 because why the hell not? I'm better at this stuff now. Criteria for this list is basically the card needs to be as generic as possible. And if it's not, then it's got to at least be, you know, very, very, very well suited to its particular deck. And also they're going to be kind of categories as opposed to one particular card, but we're going to pick a card for that category. For instance, if one of the categories was level four beaters, spoiler, it's it's not. Something like, I don't know, Megalo Smasher X would be the, the flagship card because it's a 2k beat stick. That's not a category. All right, just a quick editor's note because I apparently I didn't explain this in my first recording through and I didn't realize that I didn't explain it, but whatever. Basically, we're going to consider a top decking scenario whenever you would absolutely need that next card. Your board state and current cards in your hand are not necessarily, uh, they don't have to be anything in particular. The only criteria is need to be in some sort of disadvantage. Granted, a card would get tons of bonus points if you can play it when, like, you don't have, like, really anything on your board or you only have a couple cards in your hand or when you're almost completely out of resources. And by that extension, if a card requires you to have particular things as opposed to just, you know, it's good when you do and it's good when you don't, it's just kind of more generic, then that will also count against a card. Just figured I would clear that up. So without further ado, here's the top 10 top decks to top deck off the top of your deck. <laughs> Number 10 is Tour Guide from the Underworld, or any other kind of starter that gets your plays going. Tour Guide from the Other World is a level 3 Dark Fiend that when she is normal summoned, she special summons from your hand or deck another level 3 Fiend. Its effects are negated and you can't use that monster for a Synchro Summon, so if you just grabbed a Tuner out of your deck, you can't go with that. However, you certainly can use it for Link and Xe plays, so yeah, you're probably going into Needle Fiber or, or a Cherubini or Dante or any numerable other cards that are really, really good that you need to make in order to get your plays restarted. A powerful starter is a fantastic top deck to swing the duel back in your favor. Number nine is Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial is a powerful spell card that allows you to send one monster from your deck to the graveyard. Similar to Tour Guide, this is your one-off power spells that set up your graveyard or your banished pile with something like Gold Sark, that in a particular deck, that is what you need in order to get your plays going. Similar, to, it's similar to a guy, it's like a starter. But our flagship card, Foolish Burial, is at one, so yeah, it, it's definitely in the right deck a bit better than something like Tour Guide. Number eight is Shadal Fusion, or in some cases, some sort of in-archetype fusion card that you are allowed to use. Shadal Fusion's a fantastic top deck, because if your opponent has those extra deck monsters on the board, you can use material from your deck to perform a fusion summon, so you don't need any hand or, or field advantage in order to use it. You can just slap that crap down and get yourself a construct. Nice. Especially in a deck like Shadal's, sending those monsters as material to the graveyard also will trigger some abilities and get you some even more extending on your plays. It is a fantastic card to see in Shadal's, and by extension, other such similar fusion spells that allow you to use like materials from your deck, like something like Brilliant Fusion, had we been still able to use it the way we used to, which is another great card that swings the tempo of the duel. Number seven is Evenly Matched, or some sort of board nuke like Regeki or Dark Hole or Kaiju Slumber. Evenly Matched, however, is a fantastic top deck and especially shines in uh, going second style strategy on your very first turn that you were allowed to play, going second, or in an extreme top decking scenario where you have no hand or field and you just need that one bomb ass nuke in order to turn the duel around. And because it banishes face down, it's a lot better than something like Dark Hole because those cards are a lot harder to get back. This card puts in some serious work. 
Uh, so imagine this scenario. You just had your board completely destroyed by your opponent's board nuke last turn. All hope is lost, and your boss monster now sits comfortably in your graveyard. What are you going to do? You top deck Monster Reborn! Reborn the monster! Oh no! Another power spell set to one. This thing is a fantastic top deck because if you have some choice thing in your graveyard that is just going to swing the duel back in your favor, it is a free summon. Not only does it get your big boss monster back, or maybe one of your starters or extenders in order to help you make your plays again, it also gets a monster from your opponent's graveyard. And now you can get their guy back to your side of the field in order to swing the duel in your favor. Not many cards in this game make you feel like Yugi, like top decking Monster Reborn. So you have no cards in your hand, you have no cards on your field, you're really hoping that your next card is a impactful card to the board. It needs to be something big, it needs to be something flashy, or it just needs to be a plus one. Pot of Desires, or any other draw card that doesn't require much setup and you can just kind of slap down as soon as you see it. Something like Pot of Avarice is also a good card for this slot, but Avarice does require some graveyard setup, but in a top decking scenario, that's it's probably late game, so it's it's probably not that big of a nuance, but Pot of Desires is certainly a little bit easier just to slap down and activate. Sure, it's not as flashy as your Monster Reborn or whatever, but sometimes getting those two next cards are a hell of a lot better than getting one really bomb card, because maybe those two cards are better or they're combo pieces, or you can actually make ultimately a better play because of it. And, you know, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Card advantage is king. So what's better than Tour Guide from Underworld summoning a monster from your deck in order to get your play started? A card like Zodiac Barrage, a spell card that summons something from your deck to get your play started. Sure, both can be Ash Blossomed, but only one can be Veilert. A spell card that summons from your deck is quite a bit more powerful than a monster that summons from your deck, simply because it is much harder for your opponent to stop and their options are much more limited. Not to mention it doesn't blow your normal summon, which means if you do have other monsters in your hand, you'll be able to get two monsters on board instead of just the one. Barrage, Onslaught, Quick Launch, all these cards do a hell of a job of getting you back on your feet in order to get your plays moving along again. So, a spell card that summons from your deck to your field is a great top deck, sure. But sometimes that monster you want you don't want it on the field or summoned from the deck for whatever reason, probably due to the effect of the monster, and you'd rather normal summon it, maybe like that tour guy. So what do you do? Ah, oh, you top deck something like Reinforcements of the Army. This spell card lets you get one level four or lower warrior monster from your deck to your hand. And if that level four warrior monster is... I don't know, Elemental Hero Stratos or something. Armageddon Knight? Something that in and of itself is a powerful starter monster. Drawing one of them or drawing the card that lets you get to them is actually pretty good. Not to mention uh, getting the spell card instead of the monster is just good deck thinning. So yeah, Tune Table of Contents, Reinforcements of the Army, that Ice Barrier card. Idiot. All these powerful search spells for your deck are just super handy and can come in really clutch if the scenario lends itself to it. All right, so, so you've top decked power spells. You have top decked monsters that start your plays. Hell, you even did your Yugi moment with Monster Reborn. Reborn the monster. Oh no. All those are fine and dandy, but sometimes you simply just don't want to die. Reborn the monster. Oh no. You need to buy yourself a couple of turns because maybe not one card in your deck can turn the duel totally around, but one card in your deck can certainly stall out. Keep your opponent from baiting you. Some sort of floodgate, if you will. And probably the best floodgate for this slot would be Mystic Mine. You are absolutely not going to make any friends when you play this card, but in a scenario where the advantage is solely on your opponent's board, a Mystic Mine unchecked can certainly save the day. Not only does Mystic Mine prevent your opponent from activating monster effects while they control more monsters than you, it also stops them from attacking. So this Floodgate double floodgates. Yes, this card's a pain in the ass for everyone other than the deck playing it, however, you can't deny that the card is extremely powerful. You wouldn't build an obnoxious deck around it had it not been. And because it does both attacks and monster effects, that's just double protection to keep you living for a couple more turns. Our honorable mention is Numeron Network. 
It's a field spell. If you top deck this thing, it can pretend to be Numeron Calling, I think it's called. It's a normal spell, and it'll let you summon a bunch of those Numeron Gates. It's a lot of advantage off of one spell card. It also lets your Numeron guys uh, activate their effect without detaching materials, which is pretty cool because you cheesed them out of the deck. However, the, the spell card that it's emulating needs this thing on board, so you can't top deck the other thing. It's a little clumsy in a top decking scenario, so it requires things to kind of go a certain way in order for it to work. But if it does, it's a it's an absolutely humongous, impactful play. So it, it's certainly at least uh, you should at least give it a nod. And there's also Symbol of Friendship. It literally only works in a top decking scenario. Uh, which makes it, it's actually quite bad, but it does search like every card in your deck, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> and our dishonorable mention for the list is any card in your deck that you needed last turn. Like, what the hell, man? I believed in the heart of the cards, and I drew my Ash Blossom a turn late. It would have been really super helpful when my opponent was trying to build a board. I could have maybe ran some interference, and I wouldn't be in such a shitty position right now had I just opened the stupid thing. But drawing it turn three, it does me absolutely no freaking good. And these are cool, 10 out of 10. Best hunched over camera video ever. You got some focus, young Padawan. These are really cool, and you could totally huck, put them in a sling and kill Goliath with these things. And number one is Rank Up Magic, the seventh one. Why? Well, like Symbol of Friendship, it only works in a top decking scenario. However, it's much more generically better than that other card because that other card is a little harder to set up because you also can't control like anything at all but with the seventh one now nah, you just you just have to draw for your draw phase and you get a free exceed and then chaos exceed summon off of it that's pretty slick and with something like Robarian shark you can actually s stick it on the top you're like there's ways of actually using this card now and it's uh, quite effective would anyone do it probably not but it's certainly a pretty solid top deck and does make you feel pretty slick when you actually manage to resolve it. Basically what you do is you draw this card for your draw phase, reveal it, and then during the start of your main phase, you Xe summon your Xe monster whose names are any of the number monsters from number 101 to number 107, except C monsters. Then you use that monster to Xe summon a monster with the same number except its C version right on top of it. So you get that 101, then immediately right after get the C 101. And then you can use his steely resurrecting powers for your own to help you kind of get out of a jam. I just really like this card. You can top deck it with, I don't know, Blake Spreader Zombie. There's stuff you can do. It's a pretty solid card. Why is it number one and not all these other cards that are objectively better than it? <laughs> because I said so. It's much more fun than the other ones. And then, what's this? Off the top of my deck, our secret number zero slot, the last piece of Exodia. The unstoppable Exodia. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Requiring an extremely specific scenario where your opponent has a bunch of blue eyes, white dragons, and things are looking grim. But uh, you really can't say that there's any better top deck than top decking and literal instant win condition. We don't care about extenders or, or starters or anything. I literally just won the game. That's the best effect I could hope for. <laughs> Tough kitties, Kaiba. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was just kind of a fun one. I, I, like I said, I wanted to redo an older one, but I, I, and I wanted to streamline a little bit, see if we can get to 10. I had fun with this one. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think and if there's any cards you think I missed, because there, uh, there are sure certainly some. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time. Or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?